Welcome to another episode of Eric White Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Glen Levitt uh, Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. But uh, before I get into this, I'm gonna tell you about the profile of Glen Levitt Distillery, their core range, and this whiskey. Glen Levitt Distillery is located near Ballandalock and Moray in the Speyside region of Scotland. The name of Glen Levitt in Gaelic means Valley of the Smooth Flowing One. Glen Fiddick Distillery was founded in 1824 by George Smith. The current owner is Shivas Brothers, which is a subsidiary of Panod Ricard. Glenfiddich Distillery's water source is Josie's Well. They derive their barley from crisp maltings in Port Gordon. They have a Briggs stainless steel mash tun. They use 16 wood washbacks with a 54 hour fermentation. They have 14 copper pot stills, that is seven wash stills at 15,000 liters capacity and seven spirit stills at 10,000 liters capacity. The stills are a lantern shaped with long, narrow necks, and they use shell and tube condensers. The Glenlivet Distillery Core Range. Glenlivet Founders Reserve Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It's a non age statement. It's aged in American oak cast and is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume. The Glenlivet 12 year old Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged for 12 years in European oak and American oak cast, is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume. The Glenlivet 14 year old single malt Scotch whiskey, aged for 14 years in ex bourbon cast, ex sherry cast, finished in ex cognac cast for six months, and is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume. The Glenlivet 15 year old French oak reserve single malt Scotch whiskey, aged for 15 years in limousine oak, is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume. The Glenlivet Nodura 16 year old single malt Scotch whiskey, aged for 16 years in American oak cast, Followed at cast strength anywhere from around 54.2% alcohol by volume all the way up to 55.7% alcohol by volume. It, it varies from release to release. The Glenlivet 18 year old single malt cast whiskey, Asian first fill and second fill American oak and sherry cast, followed at 40% alcohol by volume. The Glenlivet Archive 21 year old single malt cast whiskey, Asian first fill, old roast of sherry. Trong Case Oak Cognac Cast, Colita Vintage Port Cast, and is bottled at 43% alcohol by volume. The Glen Livid 25 year old single malt Scotch whiskey, aged in first fill Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cast, and Trong Case Oak Cognac Cast, is bottled at 43% alcohol by volume. So there are three general ways in which I tend to buy whiskeys. Either I'm just sort of out, you know, sightseeing in a whiskey shop, see what they got, and go, oh, uh, I don't think I have one of those. I'd like to check that out or maybe find a uh, Dusty, you know, a whiskey that's been sitting on the shelf. Nobody's bought particularly if you go to those little small, you know, mom and pop uh, size uh, liquor stores and there's a bottle been sitting there, you know, or a rare find an old bottle, you know, that someone hasn't snatched up. So you go, oh, I got to get me one of those or uh, visiting distilleries. Been to over 40 distilleries in Scotland. So I like to bring back you know, some real gems from these distilleries. But the, probably the most common way in which I buy whiskeys is with my smartphone, either going directly to a website uh, and ordering from a distillery or to a shop or using uh, an app. And so, usually I'll buy, particularly preparing for a study, oh, maybe six bottles, maybe 12 bottles at a time. And then when I go to the store, it's all ready for me to pick up. Well, I did a little bit of an oops. <laughs> There's a couple of ways that I do oops. Sometimes I'll buy a whiskey and then when I go to pick it up and get it home, I'm like, oh, I've already got one of those. Oops. So I end up with more than one of that particular bottle, which if I like the whiskey, isn't necessarily a bad thing. But in this case, what I did was I got, you know, a case of whiskey home, 12 bottles. And when I pulled the box out and I'm like, oh, that's a little heavier than normal. And I look at the bottle, I'm like, oh, this is a one liter bottle. I, I, I meant to buy a 750. So the uh, 750, which is normally what I buy, goes for about $32. And this one liter bottle goes for about $70 in my neighborhood. 
All right, let's get into the whiskey itself. So the most prominent characteristics of this whiskey is its maltiness. A lot of times, particularly heavy sherry cask or a peated whiskey, the sherry or the peat will mask some of the maltiness such that the malt character shows up on the finish on the back end. With this, the malt is a dominant character. The second most prominent character is there's a very strong vanilla character, but it sort of is underlying everything. So on top of that, I get lemon, I get orange citrus, some floral notes, a little bit of baking spices, it smells slightly sour on the nose, sort of like yogurt on the palate. Since it's only 40% ABV, I was actually, actually expecting something a little more watery than it is. I'm not saying it has a lot of viscosity to, of viscosity to it, but it's got just a teensy weensy bit of uh, weight there. On the entry, get that orange note, but it reminds me of an orange powder drink, maybe Tang or something like that. I don't know if they still make Tang these days. It was, uh, you know, the beverage of astronauts when I was growing up as a kid uh, during the space race era. When Gemini 4 first launched men into space, Tang Instant Breakfast Drink went with them. Since then, people everywhere Morning. have launched the day with Tang. Because nothing fuels up your family like a nutritious breakfast in Tang. Tang has a fresh orange taste, a full day's supply of vitamin C in every glass. And it costs about one third less than orange juice. From Gemini to the shuttle to Earth families. Great mornings have taken off with Tang. Launch your day with the goodness of Tang. And when you open up a bottle, of, uh, a jar of Tang, and you get some of that dried powder orange character with that, and yeah, it would have a little bit of sugar in it, but it's a sort of a tangy, powdery orange character. That's what I'm getting. Then definitely some lemon, and as I said before, an underlying note of vanilla. And then some floral notes. On the palate again, It's sweet and a little sourness, a little uh, tartness. I like the counterbalance between sweet and sour. Enters on sweet and then finishes or on the mid palate and then to the finish, it goes sour, a little bit of tartness. There's that sourness, it's kind of like, uh, like a yogurt sourness. Not a huge transition from the front and the middle into the finish. And the finish is uh, short to medium, short to medium. It's an all right whiskey, uh, you know, 40 ABV, 30, $32 price for a 750. You know, how, um, how many single malt scotch whiskeys out there with an age statement, a uh, you know, 12 year old out there for under 40 bucks. They're getting to be uh, rarer and rarer. Obviously this is a hugely mass produced whiskey, widely available and get it just about uh, anywhere. Probably most people are gonna, you know, make a cocktail out of it or something like that. It's not real, real complex, fairly simple. If someone is new to whiskey and just trying something out, this is a good place to start. And not in terms of budget, but in terms of the overall character of the whiskey. It's an all right whiskey. I've been trying this. I'd get home from work, get, change my clothes, sit down and watch some whiskey tuber videos to start the day, you know, so start the evening have a dram and enjoy that. It's sort of a, for me, it's a, sort of an aperitif, a pre-dinner uh, uh, drink. It's not something real complicated. It doesn't require a whole lot of thought. Isn't gonna be grabbing your attention. Maybe having a book or something like that. It's a fairly simple whiskey. And then, uh, you know, an hour later, actually I've had a wee dram, I ha have my dinner. It's an all right whiskey. Nothing mind blowing, nothing sensational uh, going on here. Score-wise, I'll give it a, just a solid 85 points. Uh, it's sort of a B, level B uh, whiskey. If you're a whiskey aficionado, if you're a whiskey collector, if you're building collections like this, this is not something you're gonna be wanting to chase after. If you're somewhat new to whiskey, or you just want something that's not overly complicated, or 
if you want to give a whiskey for Thanksgiving or dinner, we got Thanksgiving and, and, uh, and Christmas coming up for Thanksgiving or Christmas, you know, and someone, maybe they're not real knowledgeable about whiskeys and you want to give it as a gift, you know, you not want, don't want to spend a huge amount of money uh, during the holiday season, I would say this would be a good bottle. The 750, you know, as I said, for uh, 31, 32, so under 35 bucks, plus tax, take you up over 35. I mean, it just, it'd be a nice gift to give. If someone gave me one of these, I'd say thank you very much and uh, you, know, you know, appreciate it. So I would recommend it for gift giving. I'd recommend it for an event where people bring a lot of different whiskeys and people are gonna be enjoying different things. I'd recommend it for just, if you just want a simple uh, sipper, if you want to make cocktails with it. Um, but if you're a big fan of a collector and you're looking for those you know, hard, fine, rare whiskeys that everybody's going to be talking about. Yeah, that this isn't going to be for you. All right, uh, that's it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, and thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, would you like watching my videos? Would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe. Ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or push a new video. Until next time, Slanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.